Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about 204R and we're going to cover two topics. Uh, we'll go over dual feeding the direct clutch as well as um, show you an upgrade you can do uh, with respect to the ceiling rings for the stator here on the center support. So a common problem with these is going to be 2-3 flare shifting and an eventual burn up of the direct clutch and the primary culprit behind that is the uh, cast steel ceiling rings wearing deep grooves into their location in the direct drum. So you take one of these apart, this is more than likely what you're going to find. Um, as you can see here, there are literally ridges cut into the board here um, by those ceiling rings. And when this starts to happen, ridges get deep enough, you'll start to experience a 2-3 flare shift. And then eventually that will lead to outright slippage and then total burn up of, uh, of the clutch. So here's an example of what that looks like. Typical 204R teardown, I mean, that's what you're going to find. All right, so we want to use the Teflon rings to kind of avoid that from happening uh, so that the bore lasts a lot longer, especially under higher RPM. Uh, they're a lot less likely to cut grooves into the drum than the cast steel variety. And then on top of that, uh, for anything more than about 450-ish horsepower uh, in any kind of high RPM, high performance application, you're going to want to do two things. You're going to want to dual feed the direct clutch, which is a very simple process, but you're also going to want to purchase a billet forward drum because unlike the TH400s, 4L80s, and TH350s, uh, the 204Rs uh, are real sensitive to, you know, um, to dual feeding in that the forward clutch drum in these things is, I, you know, I guess uh, the most um, optimistic way to describe it is they are hit and miss. Uh, the metal that went into, um, you know, constructing those drums was very inconsistent in terms of its quality. And so you had some drums that would, you know, last a long, long time, multiple rebuilds, and then you had others that would fail, you um, you know, in you know, relatively uh, little mileage put on them. So, you know, those are two problem areas in this transmission. So, if you're going to uh, rebuild these, just factor in having to replace the direct drum and the forward drum into your pricing model if you're doing this occupationally. All right. So, with respect to the ceiling rings, I'm going to use a special tool to resize them. This is a uh, Kentmore J38736-7. You do not need this tool. I mean, anything that you can use as a substitute to resize them, like a hose clamp or something like that, will also work perfectly fine. So I don't think you need a special tool to use these uh, one-piece rings. All right, first things first, we want to just carefully work the ceiling ring, you know, over the stator into its groove. So obviously you want to start with the bottom. And then if you're going to dual feed, you're going to leave off, you're going to leave off this center ceiling ring right here. Okay, you're going to have the ceiling ring here, and you're going to have your bottom ceiling ring, but you're going to leave the center ceiling ring um, off. Okay, you want to stretch these only just enough to get them over uh, the stator so that you can manipulate them into the groove. That's it. You don't want to stretch them any more than that. Because if you overstretch them, I mean, they'll, they'll never resize back to where you need them to be. Okay, do the best you can to kind of size them by hand. And this will prep the ring to receive whatever sizing tool you're going to use. So I'll just put a little bit of assembly lube on it just to make sure that it doesn't get bent or doesn't like kind of fold over. And then I'll just start sizing. Okay, because these rings are larger um, than the bore that uh, they were originally made for, um, or I should say the uh, ceiling ring groove is going to be smaller in diameter than than what they were originally made for. It's going to take multiple um, attempts to get it to size. OK, 
okay Okay, so I'm gonna leave the tool here for about maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna go ahead and seat the drum, uh, let that sit for another 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll bring you back. Um, in the meantime, I'll assemble the drum with the clutch pack in it so we can do an air check. All right, I'm gonna leave the uh, sizing tool in place a little while longer, but for the purposes of dual feeding, uh, again, you wanna leave the center ceiling ring off of the stator here in the center support uh, on the direct drum. All you're going to do is take uh, the center seal and leave it out. Okay, this is the center lip seal. Okay, just like any other uh, dual feed application, you know, a lot of TH400, 480E, TH350. And then what you're going to need to do is plug off the high reverse feed. So I'm going to turn the center support right side up, and this is the high reverse feed that you need to block off. So you have your overdrive feed, your forward clutch feed, your direct clutch feed, and then, of course, high reverse. Now, what I'll do sometimes uh, if I don't have a purpose-built fastener is I'll just take an old exhaust bolt off an F-body, uh, use one or two crush washers depending, uh, whatever allow, will allow the bolt to fully seat. You can also trim the bolt if you need to. Put a little bit of Loctite or a little bit of um, uh, RTV so that you fully seal those threads. Thread sealant also works fine. And then you just screw that in and seat it and torque it and that's it. Okay. Uh, once the center support's fully installed. And then of course, you use your regular feed bolt for your uh, overdrive. So there's some folks who will uh, you know, block off the feed in the uh, uh, separator plate. And I think um, uh, some folks will use like, a, I don't know, either like a, a large check ball or something else, but just blocking it with a regular bolt and it really doesn't matter what bolt you use i'm not sure what the thread pitch is on this but i'll annotate it but as long as you block this high reverse feed uh you will not have any issues because otherwise you're gonna have a massive leak um you know indirect all right i'll put the drum together real quick i gotta replace uh, bushings there's two bushings in here and two bushings in there um you know uh, both sets have to be replaced and that'll be in a separate video one thing i'll point out before I fully assemble a drum. The piston's gonna have a bleeder ball on it. And your return spring housing is gonna have a you know a cutout here for that bleeder ball location. So some of these uh, return springs uh, have 10 springs, some have all 16, but you know whichever you're working with, you just want to make sure that you align this little cutout with the bleeder ball. And then if you have a 10 spring, I'll just offset and, uh, you know, have like two springs where there's a gap. I'll just put them one on each side of that bleeder ball. I mean, that's not critical if, you know, you built one of these and it didn't have it like that. No biggie. But I just, if you're not familiar with these transmissions, I just wanted to point that out. 
All right, we got a drum put together. So what we'll do is remove the sizer, and I'm gonna put a little bit of assembly loop here, install the little thrust washer that goes at the base of the stator real quick, and then we'll seat the drum. Okay, so this is a demo drum, as in I'm just using it to demonstrate what we're trying to do here. This drum cannot be used again, given all the issues it has. So uh, these drums are real bad about uh, lug wear. Uh, the band surface is no big deal, I mean you can always just turn the drum, but uh, between lug wear and wear, uh, you know, by the uh, ceiling ring grooves into the bore, uh, you know, you'll have all kind of complications there and you really can't use it again, unfortunately. Um, and I'm not aware of any sleeve that you can install, like, you know, where you can kind of just turn out the uh, bore, just bore it out oversize and install some sort of sleeve. Um, if there is one, please let me know what it is. If, you know, you have a link or something and uh, I'd be very grateful because I have a whole bunch of these drums that I'd love to be able to rehabilitate and use again, but I can't. Um, primarily due to the bore. Uh, in other words, the lug wear is acceptable. I mean, it's, you know, not bad. Like, this one's really bad. I mean, you have a significant amount of lug wear here. I wouldn't reuse this, but um, uh, some of the other drums I have, uh, the surface kind of looks more or less like this, and the ceiling ring grooves are cut fairly deep, but the lugs are fine. So it's kind of the nature of the beast. Anyway, so this is upside down, but if it was right side up, this is going to be your high reverse, this is going to be your direct, this is going to be forward, and then this is going to be for your overdrive feed. So what I'll do is I'll thread in the, the little exhaust uh, manifold bolt into the high reverse as if we were dual feeding, and then you don't really need to thread anything in for the, uh, for the overdrive. So. What we'll do is put air into the direct. Okay. You get a nice good apply. Now there's a bleed system in here. You have a bleeder ball capsule in the drum and you also have one in the piston. Uh, so that's the uh, hissing sound you're hearing coming from the underside of the drum. Hey, so in this situation, we're not gonna dual feed. So we'll just test high reverse. Okay, you're gonna have a little bit of air coming out of your direct as well because reverse is dually fed. You hear that? So you have fluid going into both chambers on either side of that apply piston. And that's what you want for direct when you shift from two to three in a higher performance application. Anyway, uh, so those are kind of the two upgrades that uh, are definitely worth considering for the 204R, uh, the Teflon ceiling rings from a 4L80E uh, for the center support here, and then dual feeding the direct clutch. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're going to dual feed, it's strongly recommended that you purchase a billet aluminum forward drum and a hardened or you know billet steel intermediate shaft to go with it so that um, that whole part of the transmission is beefed up to handle, you know, anything upwards of 400, 450 and beyond, and you won't have to worry about it. All right. Thanks so much for watching.